Yate, she able in Sinagini, and she had Filipino initially attached to me, but she Filipino Dasha Chase and Najini Dashina. Hello, my name is Belen Sinagini. I'm a full time mathematics faculty at Santa Fe Community College in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, when I was young, I would say that I was good at mathematics in the sense that I was good at following the instructions. Um, and steps and procedures laid out by my teacher in the textbook. So I would get right answers. I was able to follow instructions well, and I was able to get good scores and grades because of that. It wasn't until my uh, senior year when I took a trade class where I, our teacher gave us um, problems without a textbook, and we went through the course without a textbook. And it wasn't until then that I thought that and saw that mathematics could be created and owned. So there was a different kind of grappling and a different kind of approach to mathematics than that I hadn't encountered before. But I would say early on, um, I, I think I was good at math in the sense that I was good at following instructions, but I don't know if that's the same as being good at mathematics in the way that I came to understand and expand my notions of what doing mathematics is and was. I, don't know if I had a specific date or time or event where I felt I knew that I wanted to become a mathematician. Um, it probably started in that trigonometry classroom, like I mentioned earlier in high school. Uh, but I was also interested in going into creative writing. Um, and I thought I was good and maybe perhaps even better at creative writing than I was at mathematics. And as I weighed my options, I felt that I could um, do more with a mathematics degree than I would with a creative writing degree. Um, so it's probably a career oriented decision that I decided to go into mathematics. And um, while not knowing what I wanted to do with my math degree, I knew that I wanted to pursue an advanced degree in mathematics. Uh, so it's probably as a junior, as an undergrad where I decided to uh, move forward with a career and path academically in, in mathematics. As a graduate student, I started down the path of focusing on mathematics research and I started focusing on computational group theory. I was really inter interested in algebra and groups and um, doing things with computers and so I found an advisor where I was able to explore things related to computational group theory. Um, but I decided to switch my focus to mathematics education because I felt that I wanted to have more ways of engaging with my communities. And I wanted to come back to my community here in Torreon, New Mexico and have an impact in those ways. So my research focus has switched to math education and particularly uh, issues of equity, justice, and diversity in mathematics education. And I'm particularly focused on the roles of sociopolitical, sociohistorical, sociocultural perspectives and impacts on um, mathematics. And that includes um, seeing how the dynamics of power both in the micro settings and um, those vast social historical settings have impacted um, the way that we have approached math education and the way that we see ourselves and others as um, doing mathematics and, and learning and teaching mathematics. I've been really interested in looking at the mathematics of voting, mathematics of elections, mathematics of redistricting and apportionment. And I used to teach at an art school, so I found that I was interested in um, exploring the roles of mathematics and perspective art and perspective drawing. So, you know, as far as my broader research, I'm just interested in social justice and mathematics from indigenous and cultural perspectives, um, but also still trying to find ways to bring in things like proofs and reasoning within those contexts um, and find avenues from real, what we know as real world contexts into the world of um, reasoning and proofs 
in trying to find a happy medium and an intersection of those worlds that I feel interested in. I think as a undergrad and throughout a lot of my early graduate career, I was trying to approach going into a career in mathematics as a Native American and a Filipino and someone who's Navajo. So in other words, trying to be recognized for my mathematics first and um, my other identities secondary. And that meant that I was trying to do math the way I felt it was supposed to be done. That I was trying to engage in classes and be in programs without highlighting all of that, um, those identities about myself. And I found that that didn't work, that I am who I am and I visibly am who I am. And others identified me as such. And so part of what I needed to do was grapple with understanding that that, there, that, that, that's, that wasn't possible or isn't possible for me to separate those identities with being a mathematician. And so that ongoing struggle brought into what we, what many call um, imposter syndromes and um, trying to understand if I belonged and if people were seeing me as being there for my ability to do mathematics or if I was there as someone who would help the image of the program or department. No one ever explicitly, well, there, there, were, there were instances where it was explicitly told to me that's how I knew that I was seen in those ways. Um, where I knew that I was seen, being seen as different. And in doing so, I had to prove, feel like I was proving to myself and prove to others that I belonged and that I could hang with people um, academically and mathematically um, in these programs. So that was an ongoing struggle and is still somewhat an ongoing struggle, um, but a little less so. And, um, that's part of my ongoing thing and thinking about identity and disrupting and broadening notions of what it means to do and be a mathematician. My proudest accomplishment is, you know, of course, finishing my PhD and completing all the requirements to do so. And kind of a sub proud moment of that is, um, how I pass my qualifying exams um, that are expected of all math PhD students in my institution. And, you know, I mentioned this earlier in our conversation about how I had to resist the urge to feel that, um, that I would be viewed as someone who couldn't do mathematics by switching to education. And there's a really bad notion out there about how or a, a bad phrasing out there where if you can't do it and teach and that's um, that doesn't serve educators well, it doesn't serve teachers well, and it's really a um, disheartening um, way of, of, of how we view educators and teachers, but it still impacted me in, in how I wanted to choose my career paths. So at my institution, all math education doctoral students still have to take and pass qualifying exams in the core subjects and courses. And for some of the, mm -hmm. those qualifying exams, it took me more than one try. And in the end, I got high passes on all three qualifying exams. Um, so there, are, I know there are many issues with the, the role of qualifying exams and that needs to be challenged. And I hope that we find ways of addressing that as roles in, in as gatekeepers in PhD programs. But at that moment, and for me, it was a proud moment for me to prove to myself with the current structure that I was able to satisfy those requirements with the, and, and in the end with the highest um, possible outcomes. So I mentioned earlier how I was trying to decide between creative writing and mathematics as an undergrad, um, deciding what to major in and actually applied for a tutoring position for writing and creative writing. And I didn't get that position, but I did get a mathematics tutoring position at the American Indian Student Services. And when I was there, I, um, one of the fellow tutors was a civil engineering student who 
had taken more mathematics than I had and was able to teach me more about Calc 3. I, I had taken Calc 2, she had already taken Calc 3. And so I found it fascinating that there was another um, Navajo and Native woman who was taking mathematics when I was um, the only Native in my math classes at the time too. So this person, she is a tutor and we got to know each other and um, I, she kind of helped me with my study habits and um, being a tutor with her and being at the center, uh, the American Indian Student Services Center helped me find a community and um, a support that helped me to finish my undergraduate degree. And that tutor, um, we graduated together and at the same time, and we started dating and we went to grad school together and um, she's now my wife and mother of my children. And she's helped kick me in gear academically, but she's always been the um, person throughout college and graduate studies who has been front and center as my support person and um, has been my role model with not only her ability to go into engineering and science, uh, but was a role model in mathematics too. But of course I've had my mentors, my advisors, my sisters, my parents and my community who have been behind me and there this whole way. And I mentioned my teacher in high school, Edgar Romero, um, was my high school teacher who helped me to realize how mathematics can be created and owned and um, helped open the world for me in, in not only how I approach mathematics, but in seeing um, the opportunities that students are afforded and not afforded at, at multiple levels in their educational paths. So some words of wisdom and hopefully inspiration. You are mathematical. You are a math person because you do mathematics. You come from people who are also mathematical and you come from a long line of people who have been and have always done mathematics. So thank you for all that you are. Thank you for all that you do. And there are communities and people who are out there who are wanting and willing to support you and to help further the success that you've already accomplished. And we can't wait to see and hear more from you and hear more of your voices in our mathematics community. Mm -hmm.